Hello, viewer, and welcome to another edition of The Vent. My name is Ambassador Jesse, and as you know, I'm your host. Now, gender-based violence is a pandemic that affects us all. One way or another, we are affected, whether it is with us or our loved ones, or somebody that we just hear about or know, or the stories that we even come across, we just break our hearts. We all are affected, especially in this climate. And so today on the event, we will be lending our voice to this cause in line with the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence. Now, I wouldn't be doing this alone as I have got a guest with me in the person of let me let you do that introduction. I was going to say it, but you're here, I mean. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, MB. My name is Juliet Ohahuru Obiora, and I am the founder and program coordinator for Action Against Child Sexual Abuse Initiative, AXAI. So? Yes, that's it. So that's your introduction there. Now, as usual, I just give you a warm welcome to say we are here on the event, but we'll take a quick break and return. And today we're speaking about gender-based Violent. Stay tuned and thank you for being with us. Welcome back to the event. Today we are talking gender-based violence. And we have Juliet here with us, and she's going to be telling us about the 16 days activism uh, against gender-based violence. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to be speaking about today. And like I said earlier, one way or another, this has affected you and I. So it may have not been directly to us, it might have been somebody that you know may have been stories that you just hear i mean with the things that you see on a daily on social media your heart to be broken you see one story or it can change your mood exactly. for weeks because of the things we see exactly. and so first of all let's begin by talking about the 16 days of activism yes against gender-based violence what's that yes yeah, so the about? 16 days of activism against gender-based violence has been it's become a tradition over mm -hmm. the years mm -hmm. and it just kicks off from the 25th of november when we commemorate the world day for elimination of violence against women mm -hmm. and um, girls mm -hmm. so it kicks off from that day and you know it goes like 16 days which is on the 10th of december mm -hmm. so this has become a tradition over the years where you know people working in these areas cso's you know even organizations private organizations you mm -hmm. know all sorts they, they participate it's a time to recognize this issue, the issue of gender-based violence. Now, mm -hmm. in this part of the world, when we talk about gender-based violence, we're primarily talking about women, girls. Why? Because mm -hmm. you know the patriarchal nature of our mm -hmm. region. Yeah. So that's where it falls to. So we're just recognizing, you know, what these issues are for them at home, at work, at the big offices and governments, you know, just talk about it generally. Mm -hmm. So this is what it, it represents and it doesn't just stop 
online too. I, I forgot to talk about that. Mm -hmm. you know, because you know we're living in the virtual world That's and right. the physical world. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about all these issues that affect women mm -hmm. when I talk about gender based violence, of course gender, but I, I took it back to women because in our region we're primarily talking about women and girls. Yes, so, and so yeah. you see that I'm writing actually is <laughs> is a question I'm going to save for later regarding yeah the men yeah so yes we will draw regarding women but i know that even in this climate because a man might just be watching or a boy yes. and they're saying do these people understand that we also experience some level or some form of gender-based violence but we would hit on that, that later. later yes okay. so tell us about aksai and the role that you play in this activism oh thank you so much um, let me take back that thank you. <laughs> Why? No, you can't keep, keep taking people all the time. <laughs> okay. I, I, I take it. I, I take, take it. it. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Before so, you take it back. <laughs> so that's it. So, okay. AXI, Action Against Child Sexual Abuse Initiative, mm -hmm. is a women-led non-profit organization. It's not just women-led. It's also a survival-led non-profit organization mm -hmm. where we are focused on addressing issues on gender-based violence, you know, leveraging technology. So technology. Okay. this season, this activism for us has been about, you know, talking about what is happening online, you know, with regards to gender-based violence. And then um, one of the things we did was to have what we, we launched a campaign called Online Child Sexual Abuse and Crime. Like I said, we're working with women, we're working with children, we have our various projects, but everything leverages technology. So we do a lot of mm. work online. Mm -hmm. So what we did this season was to launch a campaign where we called Online Child Sexual Abuse mm. and a Crime. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're just Tell trying to, that. yeah, we, we're trying to sensitize the 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 gen like let me don't call it the gender when you look at online sexual or any form of online abuse you mm -hmm. find out that when it comes who is online you have more males online now if you look at the perpetrators of this crime you right. know 90 percent of them are men you know men most of them are the ones that are into you know porn or any sort of those kind of things so whenever you talk about perpetrators mm -hmm. exactly you have men it doesn't mean that you know we may want to do we're it, talking about the, the about statistics and the numbers exactly now. Mm -hmm. so you see that we launched this campaign to to bring up to date to tell men that hey this is what it is because the truth is when we talk about online child sexual abuse you know we have to talk about what is it to start to That's start right. from there. That's so what right. is it so mm -hmm. Today, you know that the internet space, the virtual space is a place where everybody lives, children, adults, and everybody. So it has provided a space to also assess children, you know, mm. regardless of your class. I mean, mm. it's even worse with the with rich the higher people. Class, yes. Exactly. So it's worse with the higher class, exactly. So you have people grooming children when they call it from grooming to sexting to sextortion. So first of all, you oh. have to assess these children some mm. of these children are family members mm. you know some are even related so it's gone it's gone, gone beyond the the physical abuse of mm. children now mm -hmm. it starts from that there's a link but it starts from that you groom these children you can groom them by making them watch at, um, inappropriate um, content content that is not good for them sexual content mm. you can do that by making them um, do inappropriate things you know video to them self. so mm. we have streaming where you're streaming online you're communicating you also when i talk about grooming sometimes you come as friends chat you up people in 13 12 everybody is on, is on social media you chat them up you get them to be your friends sometimes they already know you you mm. share content with them that mm. you're not supposed to that mm. is online child sexual mm. abuse so whether you're sharing nude pictures for these children to see you're showing them yours you're telling them mm. to show them the ass. Mm. You're, you're showing them content that in a, is inappropriate. Right. All of this encompasses what we call online child sexual abuse. So this is happening. You know, a whole lot is happening. And for us now, we've become a hotline. A hotline is where you, you report these materials. We don't call them child pornography like everybody does because children cannot do porn. You said so that. it's taking away that word. It's wicked. It's unkind to call to, use to it put for child kids. and pornography side to mm. side. It's 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 it's. Wow. I mean, it's it's really it's, it's evil mm. to put child and pornography side to side. So mm. we we'll call it child sexual abuse materials because these are materials that you know are co children are coerced to produce. To Sometimes do. they call it We're self generated. Exactly, but you can't call them self generated because children don't do this thing by themselves. At every point in time, children remain victims. 
Mm. So even if you show them mm. this content and they became mm. principal or they became, they are still victims mm. because at that time, we all, they have a right to be protected from those That's things. Right. So at every point in time, they are victims. So in every which way, we have to protect them. So whether they are self-generating it, which we also cancel that world, they are coercively generating, generating those materials. It. And they're you innocent. Know, I mean, innocent. You nev there never comes a time when you would say a child isn't innocent, if you get what I mean. I mean, exactly. this is even for the layman. Exactly. There are certain things that kids would do and you would say, he's a child. Exactly. They're, that's a child. So it means that whichever way, even when it seems like they're doing it from a place of interest, exactly. you can tell that this child was... What did you? What's Correct. the first thing? Coerced and um, was it molded or fashioned yes. or trained? Groomed. Groomed. That's the yes. word I'm looking for. Yes. Groomed into being that person. Exactly. You know. Wow. So there's, there's so much. You know, but primarily yes. as a hotline, mm -hmm. you know, we want these materials off, off the internet. So tell us about time. hotlines. Yes. How does that work? Well, the like hotlines. Um, we happen to be uh, a product of the In Hope Hotline. It's a global hotline. Okay. We are the only hotline in Nigeria, as we speak. The only hotline in Nigeria? Yes, yes, yes. That's, so that's amazing. How, that's what do we do? Mm. You visit our website. If you see any material in any, any site, be it on Facebook, be it on Instagram, and you see something that is inappropriate, you know I, I've, I come across lots of them on TikTok. That's right. You know, there are inappropriate materials where you see children being So used. on the internet, on, the on internet, whatever platform. Yeah, on whatever platform, you just pick up the URL, okay. and then you go, and then you report it. The moment you report it, then the work starts for us on the back door. So, we so anybody can be a and in quote agent yes for yes, for yes. your organization yes, yes anyone at all can report like, like, this it's not even an agent we're all protecting children it, yes, it's our yes, children actually, it's yes. our sister's children it's our it's our children it's you know the, the community it's a community mm, yes. you know so we're all looking out for children so when you mm. see these materials don't share don't save on your phone don't share Report can we say that again like let me i need to put my voice on this don't share please Exactly. Please, because the truth. I'm, I'm sorry to cut you short. When you do this, you're also you're, you're promoting this content. Exactly. You're violating the child's rights. Mm. You actually are. Yes. You know, for privacy, you're exposing this child. And guess what? You're also um, hmm, today. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the word I want to even use. My words have been disappearing today. Yes. You are feeding. The pedophiles, the pedophiles and other people who take delight in this content you're giving them food you're encouraging them exactly. you're bringing it to their table exactly. because they will see it and then they use it for the things that we do not desire that they use it for exactly. so please don't share by all means mm. copy the url if you need to share share exactly with go the, and hotline. Report it to yes. the hotline yes yes you know, so just go and report it to the hotline this is new so there has to be so much work to be done to get people reporting mm. because you remember what happened with the chris land girl it became like mm. a fiesta yes everybody you yes. don't see the video yes have you seen it yes yet? oh show you have me people sending it to you on whatsapp you have i mean and i think what's most important especially like for what i do this is child damage exactly what this means is this child will grow up and it's it's stigma is the way that even for adults who say the internet never forgets, that's what you're doing to that child. Exactly. She would grow up, become a full-grown adult, believing God, and we, we trust that a responsible adult, but she has a scar exactly. that the internet has generated. And who is the internet? We are. Exactly. You know, most times, it's, it's, there's so much that needs to be done, that needs to be done to put every sector involved to understand how important it is to keep children safe. Honestly, you know, most children take their own lives. So, so, so we see it now. It's so easy. Rather than have the whole world looking at you naked or you know seeing, in, like it's a, the shame, the it's shame, the stigma, it's the stigma. So it's uh. it's so much, and it's just there. Even adults take their lives when they have when that they kind have of scandal exactly. happen. You and know, you you put all this responsibility on on, on, a, on an innocent child. I mean, it's 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 unbelievable. Okay, so 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 this is profound for me. I mean, there's just a lot more to be done. We'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. I'm desirous to know why. Why did you step into this this sphere of this field and promoting this cause? And there's a lot more that we need to talk about. But well, stay tuned and we'll be right back.
Welcome back. This is still the event on viewer television. And of course, my name is Ambassador Jesse. You know that. I've still got Juliet here, the founder of Axi. Now, my next question will be, why Axi? Why did you decide to delve into activism or gender-based violence? Okay, yeah. So, of course, um, it's, it's a very personal situation for me because okay. I, I was a survivor of childhood sexual violence. Wow. And, you know, I can proudly and openly say because it's not my shame. Mm. You know, we have a lot of people. It's not just me. I know there are millions and thousands of people that out there. Right. who, But men and women who mm. can say these things because they've taken the shame that is not theirs to wear on them. And, and that is why, you know, I, I'm a part of a movement called the Brave Movement. I'm, I'm heading the West Africa region okay. on the African Union Tax Force of the Brave Movement, which is, is a, a survival-led uh, movement on ending so childhood So tell us a bit about Brave. Yeah, so the Brave Movement is a global body okay. um, that you know, it's survival, it's survival of childhood so sexual about violence. It's survival. Yes, survivors. So, yes, there are mm. survivors of childhood sexual violence okay. all over the world, mm. Africa, Europe, mm -hmm. just talk about it. Mm -hmm. We are all working together. And what are we doing? We're giving voice to this cause. We're saying, hey, I am a survival right. and it's okay. And because to end childhood sexual violence, we have to end the silence. Mm. Yeah, so we need to have faces that can speak up to this, you know. To say, I've been there. Yes, I've, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a victim. Mm -hmm. you know, we and have I these survived. voices mm. to help others. You know, our slogan is that we are being brave so that children can be safe. Beautiful. So if you have brave people all walking out, I mean, we have their pictures. That, I mean, there's a sage member of it, which is the original 16 members of the survivors who have come up with their pictures boldly wow. to say, hey, I'm a survivor. I, mm. I used to have some complex before now. And then I joined this membership and it was like, wow, I mean, men, women will come out and they'll say, wow. hey, I'm a survivor of mm. childhood sexual violence. And that just did it for me. So, you know, it's also calling out on survivors out there. It's not just me. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a global body where we're trying to bring survivors on the table mm -hmm. that to, you know, make decisions that keep children safer. So, you know, if you're a survivor out there, you just launch out the Brave Movement. I mean, www.bravewomen.org. Okay. And, you know, you can join forces. You can reach out to me. I can connect you to the movement locally. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we just need to grow this body of people mm -hmm. to make sure that children are safe. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so just know that you're not alone. Please. You're not alone. So I was mean, it from there that you birthed AXA? Yes. I, I mean, that years ago I had worked in non-profits and, okay. you know, I always wanted to do this because I just felt like there was not nobody. I mean, we, I worked in malaria, in a malaria project. I worked in the HIV project. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, these people have all the money in the world. I mean, but there's this thing that is really dear to me. I, I really wanted to talk about childhood sexual violence. Mm -hmm. And then I veered into that uh, about five, six years ago now. Mm -hmm. You know, I just resigned. I mean, I woke up and I resigned from my wow. job. And my colleagues Passion, were like, eh? <laughs> yeah. they were like, oh, what are you doing? I was like, no, I, I think I have to go do this. And I, I resigned and, and, I, and I started off, you know. So this five years down the line, and I've seen other voices and other people of like minds, mm -hmm. and we're working together. You know, one of the things the Brave Movement is really pushing is to see how we can have more funding for projects that work on childhood sexual violence mm -hmm. because you can see it all over the world i feel like children are neglected wow. and in this time of this this time of digital, this digital outburst mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. crazy look at what is happening with the balanciaga i don't know how to pronounce it yeah, and all that okay. so we have to put an end we have to raise our voices towards childhood sexual violence. It's not acceptable. Children should be children. I mean, it's endless. Child marriage, yeah. child abuse, you know, and all that. Mm -hmm. We have to put our, bring our voices together to put an end to it. So share, just to buttress the point and to drive this home for yes. especially the viewer, yes. share with us some stories. Of course, we see stories all the time, but I would love to hear stories that you have come across in your walk, you know, doing this. Yes, you know, some I, I've come across a lot of stories, but you know, I'll just share one that really hit me mm -hmm. so bad that I, till today, I'm still looking for how that could be solved. You see, in in most homes, you you know, these issues are normalized, is, issues of child sexual violence. I wouldn't talk about what is happening online. We've all seen it, but physical childhood sexual abuse. You go to most homes, and when it happens, the secrecy. Mm. You know, sometimes it's between the father. 
you know, the incest situation. That's right. You so know, father the, incest exactly, would be father and children. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And in other times, you know, I know that the household scenarios where you have younger people that live, you know, this part yeah. of the world where we have the help, you know, help domestic staff. Yes. So those domestic staff, they go through a lot of abuse. And what mm -hmm. you see is that you see that there's no system that, you know, I know they're putting a lot of system that, that kind of allows even the woman because most times, you know, what you hear is that they tell you to go and protect your home. Mm. So these women, they don't want to speak up. Like mm. I can tell you over and over that most stories of women, one, do they want to leave the man? Mm. You know, I understand the, the part of, you know, being empowered enough to be away. But look at the child in question, exactly. there's nothing, exactly. you know. So you, you have seen a situation, a particular one that hit me was this household was raped, you know. And by? By the, of course, you're living with your master and the mistress, and you were mm -hmm. raped by the master. The mistress is aware of this rape, and she's, she's, you know, she's still blamed. And you know, when you try to interfere, you know, at first I got a hinge of it, but trying to interfere, I, I was not given the room. You know, this child was taken uh, away. Wow. You know, so by the time you get in the law enforcement, they didn't allow that access for mm -hmm. you to even so the child there was no way to even get this report i don't know how to explain yes it. So i get it to get that the child couldn't get help exactly pretty much you know so every day i just think about and that it. child is still in that environment no that child has been taken away in a way that you, we could not track the wow. the child to wow. and most of these people don't have the means and the know-how to report these issues They're helpless so no matter what happens childhood sexual violence or sexual violence of any kind has we still have so much work to do because of the society we live in, because of the secrecy and silence that fuels this idea and makes men to say, oh, I did it. Especially even, for our culture. Exactly, and exactly. Because even the mother-in-law or anybody will tell you, hey, go and take care of your home. Go and mm -hmm. cover your home. You don't know what happened in my time. It was worse. That is right. So, I mean, it's normalized. I mean, this is something I hear all the time. And sometimes I'm, I'm almost getting numb. Like, how mm -hmm. do people live with this kind of, you know, and it's normal to tell people to just go and live with it. I mean, come on, is this the first time it's happening? Mm. Normalized. And that's why 16 years of activism is really very important to bring this kind of complex voices or right. complex issues. You know, we've talked about empowering women to be able to speak up, but the mm -hmm. culture of silence is beyond empowerment. Mm. Even if you're empowered sometimes, that culture of silence and the whole you know, idea of marriage and the whole normalization of this violence and acceptability. So some foundational, yeah, cultural, societal. It's crazy. It's crazy. Foundation still yeah. that we need to correct. I mean, it's because I honestly, in in light of what you're talking about, I still see that regardless of, I think it was um, two weeks ago, myself and my partner Nonso spoke about why people stay in abusive relationships and i mean this is it's all connected and you know some people sent in comments we had professionals sent in videos just telling us why and you can still see that even with the enlightenment the advent of social media the education that we get this activism that we have because now you have a lot of ngos willing to help and everything even with this you still have people staying. Exactly. You still have exactly. people staying. Exactly. On the grounds of religion, on the grounds of culture. Sometimes these things are subconscious. We do not even know why. Exactly. That, that's where I'm going. It's eaten deep into us, you know. And sometimes you say, oh, she's so educated. But I'm telling you, it's still not. It's, 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 ingrained. it's, kind it's of how we grow up. Exactly. I mean, it's what you've known for the 30 years of your life or 28 before you got married. So. Yeah, but you know, the systems have to really start help addressing these issues, you know. We have to, I mean, in this part of the world, it's like that. You know, in the other part of the world, it's the other way. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you're you, scared of women. You want to respect you're women. You're careful because you know their what, rights what is have coming. Been upheld. That's right. And that is why we're saying um, every 16 days of activism, we need to look around all those rights of women, be it their maternal health rights, be it their rights to, you know, the whole infertility blaming, be it their rights to um, um, the, the money part where they're, you know, um, you know, so right. there's so much mm -hmm. like, you know, so looking around those, all those areas and that's why when you talk about gender based violence, you talk about primarily the female gender in this part of the world because there's so much. Because truly 
the for female the gender takes the heat that so much for this. Much. So we would again take a break and when we return we'll be speaking about how you and I can play a part in ensuring that we are part of this activism and we would bring in our quota to make the difference that we all need and our society does need. Stay tuned and we will be right back. Addressing criminal activities like armed robbery, farmers' headers conflict, banditry, kidnapping, insurgency, terrorism, organized crimes, and all the related menacing activities do not start from the national level. Yes, everything starts from the grassroots level. Conflicts, like they say, have multiple drivers and are often local, and they do not stop at state borders. They do not stop at state borders, they escalate. Peace, security is an essential factor of human life. A peaceful and secure environment is critical to every society since it affects all aspects of human lives, properties and the nation. Everyone in Nigeria lives in a local government. When a local government is dysfunctional, the crime is bound to soar. This and many more happens when the local government is not autonomous. To address these challenges, the Local Government Autonomy Bill needs to be signed into law, granting the local governments the freedom and autonomy they need to function independently of state governments. Thank you for staying tuned to The Bent on Viewer TV. My name is Ambassador Jesse, and of course, I'm still here speaking 16 days of activism against gender-based violence with Juliet, who is the founder and how else do you call yourself? Program coordinator. Program coordinator of AXI. AXI stands for? Action Against Child Sexual Abuse Initiative. Yes, and like Juliet has shared with me, they're keen on the virtual or the the digital space to ensure the children, because I believe that, I know, based on what you have shared, that that's one space that um, hasn't really received the attention that it requires. So we have spoken about so much. I mean, off air, on air, it's just heartbreaking what people have to go through. Honestly, I wish you could share this story, like detail for detail, but, it's even too heavy exactly. for it to be something that should go here. But bottom line is important that we know that children are having to deal with so much. I mean, we have adults who sexually abuse the female gender or even the male gender, which we'll, we'll, we'll touch on, you know, in a short while. But you have adults even being abused and they can't even deal. Talk more of a child having to deal. And as far as I'm concerned, they take more of the heat. 
because these people are just innocent. They're just vulnerable. They're just open to whatever comes, especially those who have to leave their parents and leave their family, like the nannies or the domestic staff. And you know these people, like you've mentioned how there, there's a lot going on with this class of people exactly. having to deal with so much. And so we come to the place now where we're saying, what can we do? So the NGOs are doing their, their work. AXI is doing its work. And we've shared what you can do in relation to that. But we're also saying, what can we do? And first, let me, let me begin with parents. Before we get to the aunties, the uncles, the neighbors, just being a community member. How can parents ensure that they're playing their role, that their kids are protected? Yes, the parents have a lot, a lot. I mean, the parents have the bulk of the work because, of course, every child comes from somewhere. Every child learns from somewhere. So, in today's world, mm -hmm. it's every everybody's living on the internet, and, and it's really important that we start limiting those spaces, especially for our children. So limiting the be, spaces, mm -hmm. not just limiting what they asset, what they have access. They have to, access. Which is having to um, oversee what they have access to. Because mm -hmm. when you talk about child abuse, you know, or child sexual abuse, you can abuse your children yourself when mm -hmm. you allow them access to inappropriate content. Wow. So, you know, wow. children so are So that's very, an abuse? Yes, it's an abuse. Mm -hmm. If you allow mm -hmm. children access to inappropriate content, they will watch wow. it and they will replicate it. That's that children true. for you. That they true. will go to school and they will want to do those to things. To experiment. Exactly. So it, it's just normal. So parents have to provide that kind of Safe, um, safe haven. space, mm -hmm. haven for children at home, and also educate your children. You know, actually now I can tell you that everybody knows. You know, body parts, private parts. Don't touch these. Don't do that. You know, it's gone beyond just body parts. You have to also understand that you know beyond the body parts. When you have to totally give them full sex education. So no more know. saying there are certain things you shouldn't speak to no. a child about as it concerns sexuality you know you know children from the age of seven eight you should start talking to them you know even younger mm -hmm. you know about touching them you don't have to mm -hmm. call mm -hmm. the private parts by pp and we you have to call it by, by the name. name yeah it's mm -hmm. really important mm -hmm. it's not a taboo to say the it's, vagina it's the name or you say, say hand yes, exactly it's not a taboo mm -hmm. but you know we have this names pp and we we so we already and i'm sorry to yeah. you know to interject i feel like part of what we do by these tags is we make them feel like there's something more they need to discover about what we're trying to hide. Exactly. You know, it's just when you keep something a secret, that's when people are trying to discover it. But when you're playing about, oh, it's this, it's that, saying it as it is and not trying to shield and hide, because somehow children are just wired to be curious and want exactly. to experiment. Exactly. So if you're not being pop and playing, they'll want to delve in. Why are you calling it? Why are you, you know, sugar coating? <laughs> They would want to find out. Yes, very true. And, and you know, most importantly, you know, calling it by the names is this, you know, situations where a child is trying to pass a message. Mm. But the seriousness is not there because it's we, we are PP. You know, but when mm. a child is trying to make some report or she's even talking to someone. Saying this person you know, touched. Touched or did they. So that message has to be very clear. Mm. It has to be very clear. So it's really important we educate so the children. So this is for parents, yes. Exactly. Educate your children. also monitor what they have access to mm. on the online space. Monitor. Then down to their schools too. Mm. You know, so the school has even a more a major role. A major role to play. We're working to see if we can bring programs to schools mm -hmm. because children spend most of their time in school, school when they're not home. In fact, That's they spend right. more time in school mm -hmm. than home. So we, you know, we're just working on some programs called the, a program called the Safe Hub, where we're just building ambassadors across schools. That's kicking off next year fully. Okay. So safe. We're just safe Hub Club. Oh, okay. so it's a digital club for children. So nice. children can, you know, participate in their safeguarding and the safeguarding of others. So we just so would this just be like, like ambassadors speaking up from school what are they speaking about just yeah on child sexual, sexual violence okay, you know, okay becoming you know ambassadors on this cause wow. basically you okay. know, so we just want children to have voices mm -hmm. because in a time like this with a digital age mm -hmm. you know we just need to they need to have the right you know have the access to protect to learn to protect themselves that's right to, yeah that's right basically okay so how about community members wow um in just individuals just yes. being an individual well what, what role can i play when i see that you know how can i protect another person's child yes 
Well, the, the good thing today is we, we still live in Africa where everybody's child is your child. I hope we're still, still, <laughs> we're still in that line. Yes, I hope. I hope we're still <laughs> but in that we, line. we still are. We, we can't take that totally exactly. away. Yeah. So in situations like that, we just need to know who to call. For instance, looking around CSOs um, that work on childhood sexual violence, mm -hmm. like, you know, we're building bodies together to also bring all these bodies together under the Brave Movement as okay. allies mm -hmm. of the Brave Movement. So we, we have most organizations i mean if you're not there please feel free to contact me we'll bring in your organization because we need to all you know correlate our work just like it's done in every other sector yes. in hiv in malaria we know who is working in what region that is what the brave movement is trying to do on childhood sexual violence so you should be able to know there are CSOs, um, civil society organizations, NGOs that mm -hmm. you can report to, to help. There's CCRA, there's, I mean, there's so many of them. There's AXI that is working on the digital aspect, more on the digital mm -hmm. aspect. There is Mirabel Center, there is, you know, so having all these organizations, you can reach out to them. There's the gender unit of the police force, which, you know, a lot of us so also work yeah. with. How, how can we have access or get to know a lot more about these other organizations that is it something we can just Google on the net? Is it where should we go? Yes, that's why I started by just calling out their names because mm -hmm. you know, for instance, Cecilia has a child helpline. We have uh -huh. a hotline, uh -huh. and that's why we need to find a way to correlate our. That's work. right. So, so there's a connect. Yeah, exactly. So if I come to your site, I should be able to see that if it's this gender specific um, report or something yeah, related. Reporting on URLs. Yes. You know, or, or other services we offer, mm -hmm. advocacy. We all do advocacy. Yes, you know? but in and I, I'm calling all these organizations. Yes. There are some I've not called, but there are exactly. a whole lot of them. You know, but what I'm trying to say is that you know, it's it's all this body of movement doing different things, True. but all for the sake True. of children. Yes. So regardless, the helpline there, you can call the Cicera helpline. You can check it out online. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. You can call um, Lagos. Okay, that's that's just in Lagos. DSV. Um, we have Mirabel and that is also in Abuja. So please take note of the names. So mm -hmm. We have a whole lot of them. In fact, mm -hmm. you know, under the Brave Movement, we have a list of all these organizations. So type in the Brave Movement. Together. Yes. So you check out the check brave out the Brave Movement. Movement. You can see the hotlines. Mm -hmm. You can reach the the hotlines and the helplines in Nigeria, and then you can just call for help. And if you don't want to call for help, we have the police. Please, whenever you see At least these that's issues, the first point of call. Right? Report it. Mm -hmm. It's not a crime to report. When you don't report these issues, you're fueling it. The silence fuels it. The more you're quiet, the more that person has another chance to redo what he or she has done. Has done. You know. So we just have to use our voices. Regardless, when you see things, don't walk away. Report it. I mean, police have their phone lines. Reach out to a police station. Report it. And if it's they can take it up from there and give you some direction. Report it. They will give yes. you directions. They also get support from all these non-profit organizations and CSOs. That's right. They get so, support. So how can you be reached? Because I know that if you can be reached, you would also be able to connect the person based on their situation to the certain activism group or NGO that they should be in touch with. But if for the hotline, for the things that even concern what you're doing directly, how can we reach you? Yeah, so our website www.acsaing.org. You can visit our website, you know, kind of our phone lines are there. You mm -hmm. can just reach us our phone lines. You can also report system. There's child sexual abuse material, not child pornography. You can also report there. And so you can reach us directly. You can send us emails on info at axiang.org. Mm -hmm. You know, we're always um, up to answer you. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I'm overseeing the West Africa Brave Movement. So and in the Nigeria you chapter, we have a list of all these organizations already mm -hmm. in, our, in together. So, you know, we're just trying to grow. So the Brave Movement is like a global body, bringing all those allies, survival-led networks, you know, NGOs, everybody working on childhood sexual violence yes. together so that, you know, we can correlate and, you know, make sure our work will work across each other. That's right. Basically. Have you got a phone number? Yes, it's on the website 070 plus 234 070 3189 I think the other is also on the website. So okay. please feel free okay. to reach me. Can you take that slowly? Because I know a number of people in this <laughs> our environment. Yes would rather put a call through than go check on the internet okay. even though we all should be able to go to the internet very very necessary yes. so i know that the phone number will seem like a quick way that people can reach you so please can you just take that again so they can get it even though we'll put that as well so you can copy that okay, so for the viewer okay mm -hmm. plus two three four 
7031890444. So you can reach there and then, you know, if you are a survivor out there, it's really important that you know that you are not alone. There's a movement for survivors of childhood sexual violence and you are not alone and you don't have to take the shame that is not yours. Mm -hmm. So you, you can reach out if you want to join the movement, if you want to lend your voice to the movement, please reach out and we'll incorporate you into the brave movement and okay. together we will end childhood sexual violence. Yes and amen. So I wanted to say, because I don't want us to leave the male gender out. Yes. Let's just quickly in a minute talk about how the, the male gender, the boys or the men who are having to experience this, especially when it comes to children, so the boys who are experiencing this, experiencing this how they can be integrated in this. So our focus was majorly on women. Yes. But how can we just show that they also are have a cover here, do they? Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. they do. It's, it's, it's just that we, we talk about women because 90% of the time they are the cases we're dealing with. Right. And we are in a in man's part of the world mm -hmm. and so but for boys you know boys are I mean it's really very difficult for boys who encounter abuse because mm -hmm. I mean you can have 10 women can comfortably Open. say hey I happened to what me. happened to me mm -hmm. but you can find one boy who would do that because one you know the the norms that you know you know how they've been grown into taking things and all that has mm -hmm. it, it's really very destructive for boys but, and tell you you're yeah, a man. Exactly, you're a man. You you're a boy. It makes you look Take weak. It. That's right. To have to say you were sexually abused, it, it reduces you. But the truth is, you know, you, we have to do differently for boys, because which is part of what the activism is talking about. All those male preference for children and mm. toxic masculinity. Mm. You know, we have to put an end to all these things because these are the things that are killing men. Sure. Or, you know, they are very destructive. So mm. for boys, it's okay to to let them understand that it, it's okay to speak up yes in this part of the world it's still a hush hush much harsher situation than we have in other places but it's really very difficult for boys and most times it's always from a place of power for them mm. so it's very difficult you know they are forcefully you know it's either it's your coach or it's your mm. boss or something so, so that's boys, what you mean by yeah, it's from a place so, of power yes or authority always, mm. authority for boys so mm. sometimes it's it's hard it's hard you know but i know that there are child advocacy centers mm -hmm. where children get you know counseling there are helplines where they can call even if you don't want to be seen mm -hmm. and these are the kind of things we want to provide for children especially on the safe help club where children can have access to talk to you know help people to help them anonymously mm -hmm. and it's really important to talk anonymously um, because it helps them to come out and be able to speak for themselves without uh, the fear of, you know, uh, being stigmatized. Being stigmatized or, yeah. Thank you so much, Juliet, for being yeah. here. Bottom line, boys, men, girls, women, you have access to Juliet. I'm sure that your organization can give some direction. Exactly. And of course, if you go to the net, if you go to the Brave organization, movement, 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 movement you, would, you would get the help that you need. All right. Thank you so much for what you do, thank and you. we wish you all the best. Uh, thank you. Out of time, thank you so much for staying tuned, and I hope this was educative and enlightening for you, inspiring as well for you to play your part in ensuring that those around you are safe and protected, especially the children, and, as, and especially as it concerns gender-based violence and sexuality. So keep your loved ones safe, and of course, everybody in your environment safe. We would see you again next week on the event. Remember, it's same time and same station. Before then, take care of yourself. God bless you and stay tuned for our other programs. Cheers.